and I come from Waianae, Hawaii. I come from a good family of um, surfers, paddlers, boxers, singers, and I was raised on music and ocean sports. Okay, so um, I'm gonna share a little bit about my life and how I ended up where I am today. And I'm gonna share my struggles in hopes that it'll make an impact in your life and it'll prevent you from traveling down the same road that I went. So um, one night, it was a uh, Waianae High School graduation night. And I was with all my friends in Makaha Beach. Everybody was drinking and cruising, partying after the graduation. And one of my classmates was like, hey, you wanna come with us? We're gonna go for a ride. We're gonna go to Taco Bell. So I jumped in with him and the driver was um, in his late 30s. So he was like as old as my dad. I was 14 at the time. <clears throat> so I jumped in with them and we went to the Taco Bell drive through And in the middle of the drive through they seen somebody that they know and um, they ended up pulling a gun out and gun pointing the guy and has been robbing him, taking all his money, his dope. And um, when they jumped back in the car, I seen all the money and the drugs that they took from that guy and I was like, oh, that was cool. Like in my head, I'm thinking like, that was cool. I wanna be like that. I wanna rob people. I wanna take their money and drugs. And so um, I started to look up to these people. I thought they were cool, so I wanted to be like them. So um, that night, I seen them passing back and forth a pipe, a glass pipe, a clear pipe, blowing smoke. And um, I was watching and I was like, oh, I wanna try. I wanna smoke what you guys are smoking, let me try. And at first they're like, nah, 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 you shouldn't, do it. you shouldn't do this. I'm like, let me try. So they let me try. So I smoked ice for the first time at age 14. Well, that night, now I'm all high for the first time in my life. And I'm sitting in the back seat of this car and I'm cruising with a guy who's as old as my dad and my classmate and the guy takes us up to this property. It's like a, 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 big, a big land of Wainai Valley, and there's a abandoned bus on that property. And in the bus, all the seats were gutted out. There was just photons and mattresses and blankets and you know towels and stuff to sit down. So he would take his you know his friends there to smoke and get high and chill. And so he takes us he takes us on his bus and we're smoking, getting high. And the next thing you know, my classmate is like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to the store and come back." Well, my classmate never came back. That guy held me hostage on that bus for 12 days. He shot me up with drugs, he fed me pills, and um, he beat me and raped me constantly for 12 days straight. Every time I woke up, because he would put pills in me so that I would fall asleep, I would wake up to strangle marks on my neck, bruises and bites all over my body, and I couldn't swallow. And I would beg him, please let me go home, please. And he'd be like, you ain't going nowhere. He would make me take a shower right in front of him and use a water hose while he sat there on the steps from the bus and watched me bathe. And I would cry and beg him, please, please, just let me go home. I'm 14 years old. This guy is 38. And I'm begging him to let me go. He's like, no, you're not going nowhere. Well, after 12 days, he started falling asleep and I started noticing. And in my head, I'm like, if I don't, if I don't find a way out, I don't, who knows how long this guy's gonna keep me. So when he started falling asleep, I was watching him, watching him. When he nodded out, I took off. I ran. I ran down the road with nothing but a prayer. Running for my life, barefoot, running in a prayer. And that's how I escaped. So at this point, my whole life changed. I was no longer that same curious 14-year-old girl who wanted to try some shit. I was changed. I was broken. I was defiled, I felt dirty, I felt embarrassed, I felt ashamed. I didn't know how to laugh no more, I didn't know how to, how to be happy no more. I was a different person. And you know, I didn't tell my family what happened because, for one, I didn't want to give them the opportunity to say, see, I told you so. See what happens when you cruise with dummies? See what happens when you don't listen? What I tell you about cruising with those kind of people? I didn't want to give them the opportunity to, to be right. Because at that age, I thought I knew everything, you feel me? I thought I knew everything. Who, nobody wants to listen to their parents or their teachers because sometimes we think we know everything. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. I didn't go to school for this shit. I lived it, I survived it, okay? I didn't study about this in a book. And I'm not here for money. I'm not here because this is my job. I come here for free. I flew here from Las Vegas last night because I needed to get here to touch your life because I knew that I, you needed to hear this message. So when that happened, I held this secret within me. 
I kept this secret all the way to the age of 30. So I held this secret for 16 years. And this secret ate me up. I became cold, ruthless, heartless. All I wanted to do was stay numb, stay numb and not feel anything, not remember what happened. And I allowed that to change me. And I transformed, so as you can see, this is some of my mugshots. So I was arrested 44 times in my life. I was Hawaii's most wanted. I did 10 years in prison. I've been to six different prisons, federal and state, Arizona, Seattle, Washington, NBC, LA, Florence, Phoenix, FTC, Honolulu, Ochoa C, Women's Kailua, and Chapter Eight prisons. I spent more time of my life on drugs and in the streets or in prison than I did actually living. By the grace of God, I've been clean and sober for six years. And that was the greatest decision I ever made in my whole entire life. And you know what? I don't regret, I don't regret nothing because God allowed me to change my mess, turn my mess into a message. You know, he allowed me to survive certain things so that I could come here and share it with you because, I mean, it ain't no secret. Our society today, our drug epidemic on the island of Oahu is terrible. How many of you know people that's addicted to drugs or in prison? or walking the streets, or homeless. I can't, I can't even count how much people I lost to the streets or to drugs. So I, um, I was an addict from the age of 14 to 29. I did ICE for 15 years. Everybody in my circle started dying. My ex, he got shot in the face, he lost his eye, so today he has a fake eye. Another one of my exes, he got out. Shot in the stomach twice. He survived, but today he has a hole in his stomach, so he has those colonoscopy bags that catches your shit. My other ex got stabbed to death. You guys probably heard about him dying in a taxi parlor for a drug deal bummed out. He got stabbed 44 times in Kaimo. One of my close friends got beat to death over a half gram of drugs and some motorcycle parts. Another one of my friends shot a dope in her arm, caught a skin infection, and she died. Another one of my friends caught a heart attack smoking a pipe and shooting up, shooting up meth. He died. And I can go on and on and on and on all day long. I can just continue this. But my point is, is that drugs only bring you prison or institutions or death. Nothing else. So I had this friend. He was gorgeous. All the girls wanted him. He was bad. He was handsome. You know, he was popular. He was a pro boxer, a pro surfer. Everybody wanted him. And um, one person gave him drugs. To this day, this guy is walking around naked in my night by Wine and Harbor, talking to himself and pushing a grocery cart filled with trash, and he sleeps in the bushes. Sometimes <clears throat> all it takes is that one hit, and he'll never be the same. He, he'll never be the same. He lost his mind. And that's one of many people that were my friends that that happened to. I know another friend. Wilson, he had a big house, big trucks, big cars, he had all the jewelry. Everyone would go to his house to party. That was the party house. He was successful, he had lots of money, lots of whips, he had everything. So one person gave him crap. And um, to this day, he's sleeping in a, on a twin size mattress in the bushes at Cabana's Beach Park. So he'll never be the same. He lost his mind. He, he can't even conversate with him. And I'm telling you, all it takes is one choice to change the direction of the rest of your life. As you can see, it only took one choice for me, my curiosity, me looking up to the wrong crowd, me looking at these people like they were cool and wanting to be like them. Can somebody in here tell me what was so cool about them robbing someone in the drive thru Anybody? What was so cool about that? So why did I look up to them? Because I thought they were bad. Because at that time, I thought it was cool. But if somebody came to me when I was 14 and maybe shared this message with me, maybe, just maybe, I would have stopped and looked at things differently. But at that time, I was clueless. I didn't know how dangerous it was. For 15 years, I was addicted to ice. I could not get my life back. I was miserable running the streets, sleeping in people's yards, stealing cars just to live in them because my family said they want nothing to do with me, running food from the store, See, I'm telling you, it's not a joke. Drugs is not a game. It's not a game. You know, I know sometimes, you know, the things we watch on TV or the music we listen to, they talk about 
you know, taking keys overseas, having all the girls, and making all this money. But what they don't talk about is what happens after you become addicted. What happens after you become addicted and you lose everything that you love, or your family and the people who love you disown you. My family begged me to come home. My mom, my grandma, they would beg me, please turn and come home. But I couldn't. All I wanted to do was stay numb. And that drug had me captive for 15 years. And on top of that, spending almost 10 years in prison. I mean, that's 25 years of my life wasted. I'm 35 years old, so if you do the math, I've been stuck in that street and on that drug longer than I have actually lived my life. I have a younger brother who's in prison today. You know, he was homeless, he was shooting up dope and stuff, and right now he's in prison. And the only time he's okay is when he's in prison. He was 96 pounds when he got arrested. 96 pounds. I've never been 96 pounds in my whole life. But my brother, he's um, seven years younger than me, and he started shooting up dope. Then he became homeless, living in a junkyard. I'm telling you guys, it's not a joke. And if you look around us, the epidemic on our island is so bad. If you guys have dreams and goals, chase your dreams. Don't let anything like drugs or crime or the wrong group of friends or one bad decision stop you from that. Go out there and chase your dreams. Who wants to play football when they get older? Who wants to be a singer or a dancer or something? If you want to be successful, chase your dreams. Don't let nobody stop that or come between that. Drugs is not a game, and it, ain't, and it ain't fun being in prison either. I know everybody thinks that they want to be a gangster until they got to do something gangster. Or they think it's all funny games until it's not. Until you're in prison and you can't get out, and all your family starts dying. Your brother starts dying. Your mom gets sick. Your grandma passed away. Your uncle dies. And you can't even go to see them. So the icing on the cake for me was when, after all my friends and, and close people to my heart started dying, started getting sick, my younger brother, Mackenzie, he was 20 years old, two weeks before he turned 21. Mind you, my brother was no, no drug user, never did use drugs in his life. He was a good kid, driven, good grades in school, and um, he went to a rage with his friends, and they were all drinking alcohol. Cool. Well, one of his friends passed him a pill. Within 10 minutes, my brother died. Guess what? All his friends that came with him to the rage, they left him. The ambulance said maybe if somebody took him to the emergency, maybe they could have possibly saved him. But all those people was nowhere to be found. You think they gave a damn? They were trying to protect themselves. They just didn't want to go down for being the one who gave it to him. You feel me? So listen to me when I tell you to choose your friends wisely. All these people that I surrounded my life with for the past 15 years in addiction, you think they would, they would care if I walked out on the street and got hit by a bus? Hell no. As long as I kept giving them that dope, as long as their pipes were still filled, as long as they still could benefit off of me somehow, then they wanted me around. The minute I got clean, everybody had something bad to say. Oh, she thinks you're too good. Oh, give her a couple months, she will be back on it. No. I told them, no, if you guys continue using it, let's do it. I'm gonna still be clean. You know why? Because enough was enough. When I lost my brother, and I seen the pain and the sorrow that it caused my family, my mom, watching them cry, watching them fall apart, I realized I was a part of that. All my years selling drugs, I caused that pain in other people's lives. Supplying the streets with ice, I was only creating more pain for more families that I know nothing about. But I got to witness it firsthand after losing my brother, I said, if this is not enough, you change me, then nothing ever will be. And I prayed, and I said, God, help me to hate this. Help me hate my addiction. Help me to stop. And you know what? He did. He did. And I don't regret the years I spent in prison. I don't regret the years I spent on drugs, because you know what? If I did, who would be here right now to talk to you, to share with you this message? It's not right that I wasted 25 years of my life, because guess what? I'm here now, and I'm talking to you now. And I can't go back and change my life. I can't go back and change my, my choices, or make different choices, or, or avoid those mistakes. I can't, it's too late. But guess what, you can. You can. You can. You can avoid making the same mistakes I did. You can avoid jumping into that car. You can avoid looking up to that people. You can avoid following the, that crowd. You can avoid
way that one choice, because I'm telling you, all it takes is one choice. Let's see this off. One choice. And that one choice of mine changed my entire life forever, guys. So I'm not here to preach to you. I'm not here for nothing but to open your eyes and possibly touch your heart and make an impact on your mentality. I'm not here to school you, to lecture you, to bore you. I'm here because I got love for each and every one of you and your lives matter to me. What happens after I leave today is up to you. But if at least one person, if at least I'm gonna impact on just one person, then my time today is not being a waste of time. I don't wanna come here wasting my time. But I'm gonna tell you this much, I flew here from Vegas on my own, paid for my own ticket, come on my own free time, drove up here when I could be easily at the beach or doing something else. I came here for you guys, so please don't make this time a waste of time. I don't want to see any of you become this person or whoever that was. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. I don't want to see any of you guys become that person. I mean, arrested 44 times, Hawaii's most wanted, an ice addict for 15 years, 10 years in prison. Come on, guys, you guys got your whole life ahead of you. Drugs is whack. Doing drugs, dealing drugs, cutting school, bullying, guns, all that shit is whack. Who can be a leader? Who can be a leader? Who can be positive? You know what's cool? Is being kind to people, helping other people, looking out for the weak, protecting people who can't protect themselves. That's what makes you a gangster. So if y'all think that it's cool to do all the things I talk about, then go ahead and see for yourself. Go ahead. But when you guys end up in prison, you guys gotta remember these words that I'm sharing with you now. Damn, I should've listened to her. Because if somebody came to talk to me when I was this age, I might have, might have listened. I might have avoided what happened to me. So I'm gonna share another story. So at the age of um, 17, I ended up with a drug dealer. You know how old he was? His son was my classmate. But he had a lot of drugs. And so I became his girlfriend. Well, after a couple weeks, this guy started abusing me, shoving guns down my throat pistol whipping me, beating me, tying me up, locking me in his house, locking me in his room, going to work and leaving me locked in the room. And he would tell his nephews, make sure you feed her under the door. So his nephews would put two pieces of bread with peanut butter and jelly or turkey and, and cheese, and they would put it on the bread and they would slide it under and I'd have to pull it through. And I would cry in my bed and I'd be like, please open the door. And be like, you can't, he's gonna kill us. He was crazy. He was known for shooting people all the time, being trigger happy. And they told me, we can't, we're sorry, we, we can't, it's gonna kill us. So I was in this abusive relationship, and mind you, this guy was old. Like I said, his son was my classmate. And he used to just abuse me all the time and keep me locked in his room as like his little trophy. And he would do sick, sick nasty things to me that I'm not going to speak about. But I was so miserable that I didn't try to kill myself. So he had, um, he had a, a sickness called lupus. And so he had a lot of pain pills, a lot of medicine in his house, in his own room. And so one day, I just was so miserable that I'm, um, well, first let me back up. One day, I, I, I ran away from him, OK? And three days later, he found me at my uncle's house. Mind you, my uncle is like 80 years old. He's dead, you know? Really old. My uncle raised me, and um, he pulled up on his, on his um, dirt bike, and he said, if you don't come off the house, I'm going to put a bullet in your uncle's head. So of course, I'm going to come off. Of course. I'm going to take this away from my uncle's house, keep my uncle safe, you know, and I'm going to go. Well, when that happened, he took me on the bike, and he said, you ain't leaving me. He said, nobody else can have you. And he said, if, if you die, I die. He said, but you're not leaving me. So in my head, I was thinking to myself, God, help me like, get out of this relationship. I couldn't, every time I tried to run away, he would beat me up or beat up one of my friends or shoot at their car or do something crazy. And I would constantly would put people in danger. So I tried to kill myself. I took all those pills. I took every bottle in the whole bathroom. I took all these pills. And I was like, you know what? I'm so tired of living. I'd rather die than live this any longer. At that point in my life, death was more welcoming than where I was living. So I took those pills and I woke up in the hospital 
hooked up to IVs after they pumped my stomach and he's sitting next to my bed. And the first thing I did when I seen him was just start screaming, why did you guys save me? Why? Why did you guys save me? You guys ruined it. And the doctors are like, what, what do you mean, why did you save me? I'm like, I didn't want to live. And he's holding my hand, he's looking at me like, it's going to be okay. And I'm just looking at him. And in my head, I thought to myself, I can't handle this no more. And you know what? A couple days later, he got arrested for shooting somebody at the beach, beach park. And he went to prison. And that's how I got rescued from that situation. There were times when I was homeless. My family wanted nothing to do with me because they were so disappointed and ashamed. My dad used to get surrounded by the CRU because they were looking for me. My aunties at my mom's house and my neighbor's house used to get, the doors used to get kicked in because they were looking for me. And so there were times when I used to steal cars just for a place to store my belongings or just for a place to sleep. There were times when I had nowhere to go and I would be literally walking down the street I see somebody's yard, okay, they got a water hose. I take a shower right here in the yard. Take a shower, rinse off, and I'm so tired from living this life, I fall asleep right there. I wake up the next day with half of my face sunburned, the yard's flooded, and I'm like, oh my God, how did I get here? I lived in a house with no electricity where I had to use car batteries just for electric. And I had to keep switching the car batteries, but this one died, I had to put this one back in the car and connect the wires, connect the clips, and that's how we would have life. Or I'd have to jump the neighbor's fence and steal the water hose to fill up buckets because we had no water in the house. And that's how we had to flush the toilet. I've been in situations that most of you won't even be able to imagine. And I'm only telling you surface things here. I don't want to get too much, you know, I don't know, or too graphic. But what I'm telling you right now is just a tiny, tiny bit of my life. My whole purpose in coming here is to make an impact in your life and help you see things differently. You know, I know a lot of us, you guys don't like to listen to your parents because I know I did that but I didn't want to. Hearing their voice is like a broken record in my ears. But I'm thinking if somebody came to talk to me and share this message with me, it might have made a difference. I don't want any of you to become that person because I'm telling you it's so easy to become that person. I was in and out of prison, getting sent to different prisons, always getting in trouble. And you know what? God saved me from that. By the grace of God, I've been clean for six years, and I never ever thought that I'd be standing in front of a group of youth, a group of students, or anybody for that matter, speaking a message that worth listening to. Who would think that they want to listen to me? For what? I'm an ex-addict. For what? I was a co convict, a convicted felon. Career criminal. So why would you want to listen to me? Nobody wants to have a part of that. But I'm here to speak this message that could possibly change your life. So all I ask is that you guys just take what I said today and just take it with you. Just take it with you. Every time you get faced with a choice to choose yes or no, to go on the good side or the bad side, just think of me. Think of me and be a leader and chase your dreams. Everything I did in my life broke me. It broke me. And I only wanted to stay numb and continue staying numb so I didn't have to feel what I went through. I wanted to forget what that guy did to me. I wanted to forget how he destroyed my soul. I wanted to forget how I was damaged. And so I kept getting high because in my head, I thought it was helping me. But guess what? It's just a counterfeit happiness and a temporary joy. It's not lasting. You get high, and then in a moment, you're not high anymore, it all falls apart. You're just more miserable than you was before. So take my message, and just take it with you. And any time you get faced with a choice to choose, just remember what I said. Don't let my time here today be a waste of time. So if I just made an impact in just one of your life, can you please raise your hand? If you've heard my message today, just raise your hand. Thank you. I know I didn't waste my time today, and that's all that matters. And thank you guys for having me. I love all of you guys. Chase your dreams. Make the right decisions. Be smart. And just be amazing, guys. Drugs is whack.
Drugs is whack, prison is whack, living on the streets is whack. Do something amazing with your life. But thank you guys so much for having me and you guys stay blessed, okay? Don't let that be something that stops you from being the greatest version of yourself. 